tend to forget that South Africa is an old society. The South African economy was set up, remember, in the middle of the 17th century. And it has been evolving more or less in the direction in which it has been growing for the past 300 or more. Or, or more years. So the, 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 the structure that Colin is describing is an old structure. Uh, it is not a pushover structure. So what we saw happening in, 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 the, in the 80s and in the 90s was the Western powers saying to the South African regime at the time that this modus operandi of yours has run out of steam. Uh, it is no longer workable. It, it, it will create more problems for you. In fact, I was told by Pete Butcher that they thought long before the ANC and its arms struggle killed the, killed the whites, them, the National Party leaders, it was the whites who were going to kill them for destroying the South African economy. That is what they fear. So we're dealing with, with, with an old structure, and, and, and in a way we've had an easy part of it. Getting rid of apartheid was the easy part. It was costly. We all lost relatives and so on, but it was the easy part. The real difficult part is how do we change the society that's 300 years old into a, a, another society? You cannot beat the ANC if you don't have access to the rural population. Colin is absolutely right. And the ANC knows that. When they lost the metros, they also knew that the, the, the DA and the EFF couldn't go much beyond the metros. That's as far as it was going to go. They have the small towns, and then they have these massive rural, rural areas. 40% of the African population of South Africa lives in the former homelands. And it is mainly female and is controlled by the traditional leaders and the ANC's infrastructures that operate in, in that. So if you want to change South Africa, you have to have this long-term change dynamic and understand what society you're dealing with.